This presentation will introduce you to the Luminous Vision One three-color ophthalmic laser system and the various components that make up the system and their safe use and maintenance. Remember, lasers generate a highly concentrated beam of light that may cause injury if improperly used. To protect the patient and operating personnel, the entire laser and the appropriate delivery system, operator manuals, including all safety regulatory sections, should be carefully read and comprehended before operation. Your local Luminous representative will initially uncrate, inspect, set up, and install the laser to ensure that it is working properly. In addition, Luminous provides in-service training to ensure that your surgical staff is experienced with the performance and safety considerations of the laser. Thereafter, you or the nursing staff at your facility will perform the daily maintenance routines associated with the laser and delivery devices, including inspecting and cleaning the laser and delivery devices, connecting and disconnecting the delivery devices, and verifying the aiming beam. These procedures are detailed in this presentation and in the delivery device operator manuals. Here are the components of the Vision One laser system a laser console with control screen, a remote control, an external door interlock plug, a foot switch, all electrical cables necessary for proper connection. The laser console houses the control screen, main power key switch, emergency off button, control electronics, laser source and associated optics and power supply. The laser console is the central unit to which the laser components and delivery devices are attached. The touch activated control screen is displayed in both English and icon mode. From the control screen you can view and select treatment parameters such as laser color, power and exposure time as well as system options such as volume and screen contrast. You can also select the laser mode, ready or standby and view advisory messages. The remote control provides all of the necessary controls for setting treatment parameters. It can be used in place of or in addition to the laser control screen. The external door interlock plug must be inserted into the external interlock receptacle on the rear of the laser console for the laser to operate. The plug may be wired to an external switch to disable the laser if the treatment room doors are open during treatment. The foot switch activates the laser treatment beam when you depress it while the laser is in ready mode. If you are using the smart foot switch, the foot switch engages the automatic eye safety filter when you place your foot inside the foot switch housing while the laser is in ready mode. If you are using the power ease foot switch, you can adjust the laser power by pressing the switches on the inside left, decreasing power, and right, increasing power of the foot switch housing. A variety of fiber optic delivery devices with associated eye safety filters are available for use with Luminous Vision One ophthalmic systems. Refer to the appropriate delivery device operator manuals for specific operating instructions. Before connecting the laser components, inspect the individual components' cables and electrical connections for dirt, debris, or damage. Ensure the electrical cables are not frayed or split. Contact your local Luminous representative if any component appears damaged. Insert the foot switch plug into the foot switch receptacle on the rear of the laser console. If the foot switch is not properly connected when the laser is turned on, this symbol displays in the control screen until the foot switch is properly connected. The external door interlock is a safety feature that disables the laser if the treatment room doors are opened or the interlock plug is removed. Use of an external door interlock is optional. However, you must insert the interlock plug into the interlock receptacle whether or not you are using an external door interlock. The laser remains inoperative until the plug is inserted into the receptacle. When using an external door interlock, the laser automatically disables and returns to standby mode. If the treatment door is opened or the interlock plug is removed, the following illustration displays on the control screen. To resume treatment, close the treatment room door or reinsert the interlock plug 
and press the ready button. The main power cable will vary in appearance according to the electrical requirements of the country in which the laser will operate. First, ensure that the key switch is in the off position. Next, insert the matching end of the main power cable into the main power receptacle on the rear of the laser's console. Finally, insert the main power plug into the wall socket. You may connect the remote control at any time by inserting the remote control plug into the remote control receptacle on the rear of the laser console. Secure it with the thumb screws. In order to avoid possible damage to the laser, use only qualified luminous delivery devices. Using other than luminous delivery devices may jeopardize safe operation or damage the laser. When using a fiber optic delivery device, always inspect the fiber optic cable to ensure that it has not been kinked, punctured, or fractured, or otherwise damaged. The fiber optic cable may be damaged if stepped on, pulled, left lying in a vulnerable position, kinked or tightly coiled. Do not clamp the cable with a hemostat or other instruments. If sterile tape is used, always remove the tape before lifting the cable. A damaged fiber optic cable may cause accidental laser exposure or injury to the treatment room, personnel, or patient. The laser console is equipped with dual fiber receptacles, allowing you to connect one or two delivery devices to the laser. When connecting two delivery devices, the devices must be of different types. For example, an Aculite endoprobe and a laser link, or a laser link and an LIO. To connect a delivery device, attach the delivery device laser connector to either fiber receptacle on the front of the laser console. If using a compatible laser indirect ophthalmoscope, you may also connect the LIL illumination power receptacle on the front of the laser console. Refer to the appropriate delivery device operator manual for the detailed instructions of the use of the delivery device. When a delivery device is properly connected, the corresponding icon displays on the control screen and remote control. The laser link Z or InSight, the Aculite Endoprobe, the Hein LIO or Keeler LIO. An X on the display screen means no delivery device is connected. If two of the same type of delivery devices are connected to the laser console, this symbol displays on the control screen until one of the devices is disconnected. If no delivery device is properly connected, the following illustration displays on the control screen until a delivery device is properly connected. When using the laser link and Aculite endoprobe delivery devices, you must install a compatible fixed or automatic eye safety filter into the slit lamp or operating microscope. The eye safety filter protects the physician's eyes from exposure to the laser light while looking through the slit lamp or operating microscope. Refer to the appropriate delivery device operator's manual for detailed eye safety filter installation instructions. During treatment, the eye safety filter must be attached to the slit lamp or operating microscope. Failure to use an eye safety filter could result in ocular injury. In addition, some slit lamps and microscopes require an auxiliary eye safety filter to protect persons observing the procedure through an observation tube. To determine if an auxiliary eye safety filter is required, review your slit lamp or microscope operator manual or contact the manufacturer. When using one or two automatic eye safety filters, you must connect the eye safety filters to the laser console using the extension cable that was provided with your eye safety filters. To connect the eye safety filters to the laser, begin by inserting the eye safety filter plugs into the eye safety filter extension cable. Check the appropriate delivery device operator's manual for detailed instructions. Next, insert the extension cable plug onto the eye safety filter receptacle on the rear of the laser console. If you are using only a fixed eye safety filter, then you must insert the emulation plug into the eye safety filter receptacle. The LIO delivery device has an integrated eye safety filter. When the LIO is the selected delivery device, you need not insert the emulation plug into the eye safety filter receptacle. 
If no plug is inserted into the eye safety filter receptacle or if the plug is incorrectly inserted, displays on the control screen until a plug is properly inserted. If an incompatible eye safety filter is connected to the laser, one of the following messages will be displayed. Filter not green compatible. Filter not yellow compatible. Filter not red compatible. This message will display on the control screen until a compatible filter is connected. After checking all connections, you are ready to turn on the laser. Insert the key into the key switch and turn the key to the on position. When the laser is turned on, a self-test and warm-up begin. The self-test and warm-up take approximately one minute. When the self-test is successfully completed, the treatment settings that were last used before the laser was turned off display on the control screen and remote control, and the laser defaults to standby mode. If any fault conditions are encountered during the laser self-test and warm-up, refer to the troubleshooting guide in the maintenance chapter of your operator's guide. When the laser is powered on, the laser emission indicator displays on the control screen to provide a visual warning that the laser energy is accessible. The indicator continues to display until the laser is turned off. When the remote control is connected to the laser, the ready standby selector illuminates to provide an additional visual warning that laser energy is accessible. If the laser needs to be restarted after troubleshooting or addressing loose connections, etc., turn the key switch to the off position and wait five seconds, then turn the key to the on position. To turn off the laser under normal operating conditions, Simply turn the key switch to the off position. Remove the key to prevent unauthorized use of the laser. In an emergency, press the emergency off button on the front of the laser console to immediately turn off the laser. When the main power cable is connected to the electrical source, some internal circuits remain energized. To de-energize all internal circuits, unplug the main power from the wall socket or turn off the main electrical service wall circuit breaker. To disconnect and store the laser components, first place the laser in standby mode, then turn the key switch to the off position. Next, unplug the main power plug from the wall socket and wrap the power cable around the cable wrap. Disconnect the delivery devices from the laser. If the delivery device is single use, dispose of it properly. Otherwise, inspect and clean the delivery devices, as instructed in the appropriate delivery device operator manuals. Store the remote control under the handle on the rear of the laser console. Remove the foot switch plug from the laser. Place the foot switch into the foot switch storage mount on the rear of the laser console. Wrap the foot switch cable around the foot switch storage mount. Disconnect the automatic eye safety filters, if used, and remove the eye safety filter extension cable or emulation plug from the laser. Disconnect the external door interlock, if used. Finally, clean the exterior surfaces of the laser, as instructed later in this presentation. If you need to remove the Vision 1 laser, remember, always use the laser console handle when repositioning the system. As with any heavy equipment, use caution when tilting the laser console or moving it up or down an incline. For optimum safety, use a second person when moving up or down a steep incline. Always pull the laser console when moving it over door thresholds. Do not push the laser console over door thresholds. Do not move the laser console rapidly over uneven surfaces. Doing so may damage the equipment. When you're ready to move the console, Ensure that the laser is properly disconnected as instructed previously. Next, unlock the laser console wheels by pulling up on the front wheel locks and, using the laser console handle, move the laser to the desired site. Do not position the system closer than 13 centimeters, 5 inches from walls, furniture, or other equipment. Adequate space around the laser console ensures proper air circulation for system cooling. Finally, remember to lock the laser console wheels by pressing down on the front wheel locks. System options such as eye safety filter type, system volume, and screen brightness are selectable from the options screen. 
One or more of the following eye safety filter modes are available, depending on the type of foot switch, delivery devices, and eye safety filters that you have connected to the laser. Fixed. The eye safety filter is always in position. Moving. The eye safety filter moves into position when you depress the foot switch while the laser is in ready mode. This functionality is available only with automatic eye safety filters. Selectable. The eye safety filter moves into position when you place the laser in ready mode. Also available only with automatic eye safety filters. Smart selectable. The eye safety filter moves into position when you place your foot inside the smart foot switch housing while the laser is in ready mode. Functionality available only with automatic eye safety filters and the smart foot switch. To select the eye safety filter mode, press the Options tab to view the option screen. Next, press the ESF selector until the desired eye safety filter mode displays. Press the Main tab to return to the treatment screen. The laser has a real-time clock that maintains the current time and date across shutdowns. The time can be displayed in either 12-hour AM or PM or 24-hour format. The date is displayed in four user-selectable formats. To set the time and date, press the arrow change field selector to enter the time and date fields. Repeat until you reach the field you wish to change. Press the up increase and down decrease selectors to set the time and date. Press the right arrow selector to save your setting and move to the next field. When you have finished setting the time and date, press the selector until you exit the time and date fields and the colon between the hour and minutes is blinking. Finally, press the main tab to return to the treatment screen. The Vision One system has two different tones or beeps to signal system functions. The system emits a higher toned beep when it is able to perform the requested selection and emits a lower toned beep when the laser is not ready, when the maximum or minimum treatment setting is reached, or when an error has occurred. To adjust the volume of the user interface audible indicators, press the Options tab to view the option screen. Next, press the Plus, Increase, and Decrease selectors in the System Volume field to select the desired volume. Then, press the Main tab to return to the treatment screen. To adjust the screen brightness, press the Options tab to view the option screen. Press the Plus, Increase, and minus decrease selectors in the screen brightness field to select the desired screen brightness. Then press the main tab to return to the treatment screen. Your luminous ophthalmic laser comes with the ability to audibly inform the user of any changes to the settings. The system will audibly inform the user of changes to power level, duration, interval, or treatment color. This feature can also be turned off to select voice confirmation, press the Options tab to view the option screen. Press the On or Off button in the Voice Confirmation field to activate or deactivate voice confirmation. Then, press the Main tab to return to the treatment screen. You can set treatment parameters from either the laser control screen or the remote control. Always verify that the desired treatment parameters are displayed on the control screen or remote control before initiating treatment. If there is no change in the display values or if there is no audible indication when you press the control screen or remote control selectors, or if the control screen or remote control appears otherwise erratic, do not use the laser. Contact your local Luminous representative. Vision One laser systems are available with seven treatment color combinations. Red, 659 nanometers only. Green, 532 nanometers only. Yellow, 577 nanometers only. Red and yellow. Red and green. Yellow and green. Red, yellow and green. To select the laser treatment color, press the desired color on the color wheel. Uninstalled colors are grayed out. 
the selected color rotates into the top position. The color wavelength displays and the color of the bar at the top of the treatment screen changes to reflect the selected color. To select the treatment color, press the desired color on the color wheel. To select the laser color from the remote control, press the laser color selector until the bar for the desired color illuminates. If you have multiple delivery devices connected to your Vision One system, you can select the desired device through the remote. The delivery device field display icons representing the delivery devices that are currently connected to the fiber receptacles on the front of the laser console represents the laser link Z, or InSight, represents Aculite Endoprobe, represents Hein LIO or Keeler LIO. X represents no delivery device connected. To select the delivery device from the control screens, press the Port 1 or Port 2 selector next to the desired delivery device icon. A green light illuminates to indicate the selected delivery device. To select the delivery device from the remote control, press the delivery device selector until the icon for the desired delivery device illuminates. To adjust the aiming beam intensity from the control screen, press the plus, increase, and minus, decrease selectors in the aiming beam field. To turn off the aiming beam, press the decrease selector until no bars illuminate in the aiming beam display on the control screen. The aiming beam can be turned off only when the laser is in standby mode. To adjust the aiming beam intensity from the remote control, press the up, increase, and down, decrease selectors in the field. If using compatible laser indirect ophthalmic scope, you may also connect an LIO illumination power receptacle on the front of the laser console. The range of power settings varies for each laser color. See specifications in the maintenance chapter of the operator's manual for the available settings for your laser. If you attempt to select a power setting that is not available for the current color, the laser emits a low-toned beep to indicate that you have reached the minimum or maximum available power. To set the power from the remote control, press the up increase and down decrease selectors in the field until the desired setting displays. If you are using the power ease foot switch, you can also adjust the laser power by pressing the switches on the inside left, decrease power, and right, increase power, of the foot switch housing. The exposure duration is the duration of the laser exposure. See specifications in the maintenance chapter of your operator's manual for the available settings for your laser. When the interval is set to SPL, single exposure mode, laser exposure stops after the selected duration has elapsed. Even if you are depressing the foot switch, when the interval is set to a value other than SPL, laser exposure continues until you release the foot switch. In all cases, if you release the foot switch before the selected exposure time has elapsed, the laser exposure is interrupted. To set the exposure time from the control screen, press the plus increase and minus decrease selectors in the show icon or duration field until the desired setting displays. To set the duration from the remote control, plus the up increase and down decrease selectors in the show icon field until the desired setting displays. The treatment interval is the time in between laser exposures. Single and repeat exposure modes are available. In single exposure mode, the laser delivers a single exposure each time you depress the foot switch. In repeat exposure mode, the laser delivers repeat exposures at a specified interval until you release the foot switch. Not all interval settings are available at the higher power and exposure time settings. If you attempt to select an interval that is unavailable at the existing power and exposure time settings, the laser emits a low tone beep to indicate that the selection is not available. You must reduce the power or exposure time setting to make available the desired interval. Conversely, if you select the minimum interval for the existing power and exposure time settings and then you increase the power or exposure time setting, the interval automatically increases to the minimum setting for the new power and exposure time settings.
To select single exposure mode, press the single pulse button in the show icon or interval field until SPL displays. To select repeat exposure mode, press the single pulse button in the or interval field until the interval setting displays. Then press the plus increase and minus decrease selectors to select the desired treatment interval. To select single exposure mode from the remote control, press the show icon selector until the SPL displays. To select repeat exposure mode, press the show icon selector until the desired treatment interval setting displays. In single exposure mode, the laser color bar is continuously illuminated. In repeat exposure mode, the laser color bar blinks at the repetition rate of the current laser settings. The shot counter displays the total number of treatment pulses delivered since the clear button was last pressed. The current pulse count is maintained across shutdowns. To reset the pulse counter from the control screen, press the clear button in the shot count field. To reset the pulse counter from the remote control, press the Show Icon button. Except during actual treatment, the laser must always be in standby mode. Maintaining the laser in standby mode prevents accidental laser exposure if the foot switch is inadvertently depressed. Verify that all persons in the treatment room are wearing the appropriate laser safety eyewear before placing the laser in ready mode. In ready mode, the foot switch is enabled and the treatment beam is available. In standby mode, the foot switch is disabled and the safety shutter is closed. No treatment beam is available. To select the laser mode from the control screen, press the Show button Ready for Ready mode or press the Show button Standby for Standby mode. The laser automatically switches from the Ready mode to Standby mode if it remains idle for more than five minutes. To select the laser mode from the remote control, press the Steady Standby selector to toggle between Ready and Standby modes. The icon for the selected laser mode illuminates. Before operating the Vision One laser system, please conduct the following preoperative procedures to ensure your safety, the safety of others, and the proper functioning of your system. First, verify that the laser and its components are properly connected as instructed in the connection instructions in this presentation. Post the laser in use warning sign outside the treatment room door. Next, verify that the delivery devices are properly connected as indicated in the appropriate delivery device operator manuals. If necessary, turn on the main electrical service wall circuit breaker. Make sure that all persons in the treatment room are wearing the appropriate laser safety eyewear. See Laser Safety Eyewear in the Safety Regulatory Chapter for detailed laser safety eyewear information. Then turn on the laser as instructed in the Laser Console Basics in this presentation and verify the aiming beam as instructed in the appropriate delivery device operator manuals. Please note, do not use the delivery system if the aiming beam appears weak or not visible when set to a high intensity. This could mean that the fiber optic cable is damaged. A damaged fiber optic cable may cause accidental laser exposure or injury to the treatment room personnel or patient and could cause a fire in the treatment room. Incorrect treatment settings can cause serious tissue damage. Therefore, it is recommended that you use the lowest acceptable treatment settings until you are familiar with the instrument's capabilities. Use extreme caution until you thoroughly understand the biological interaction between the laser energy and the tissue. Do not attach any objects to the control screen during laser operation. Doing so may result in erratic operation. After establishing correct parameters, select the laser color and set the treatment parameters as instructed in the setting treatment parameters in this presentation. Then position the aiming beam on the target tissue and place the laser in ready mode. Depress the foot switch to deliver the treatment beam. During treatment, TREAT displays on the control screen and illuminates on the remote control. If surgery is interrupted, place the laser in standby mode to disable the foot switch. When patient treatment is complete, place the laser in standby mode. Turn off the laser as demonstrated in the laser console basics. 
If desired, disconnect and store laser and delivery device components as instructed in Laser Console Basics viewed earlier. If the instrument fails to operate properly, first, please check for the following items. Verify that the electrical disconnect switch, the circuit breaker, is turned on. Verify that the laser is on and properly connected to an electrical service outlet. Verify that the delivery system is properly connected. If the external door interlock is used in conjunction with a remote switch, verify that the external door interlock plug is inserted in the external door interlock receptacle. Close the interlocked door. If these measures fail to solve the problem, refer to your operator's manual for a comprehensive troubleshooting guide. Advisory messages periodically display on the control screen and remote control to alert you to a necessary action or to a laser malfunction. On the control screen, advisory messages display as text icons and or error codes in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, as shown, or as instructional procedures on a separate screen. On the remote control, error codes appear in the pulse counter display. See your owner's manual for a comprehensive guide to advisory messages. Preventative maintenance, safety, power, and calibration checks should be performed annually by a Luminous Certified Service Engineer to ensure proper laser performance. All laser repairs should be performed by a Luminous Certified Service Engineer. For training and information, contact your local Luminous Service representative. Use a cloth dampened with a non-caustic cleaning solution such as soap and water, isopropyl alcohol, or a commercial disinfectant to wipe the external surfaces of the laser console, dry with a clean cloth, or allow to air dry. Clean the laser console at least once weekly. Use a soft cloth to apply anti-static glass or plastic cleaner to the laser control screen. Do not spray or pour cleaning agents directly on the laser console or control screen. You may damage the console screen and laser system electronics. It is possible that the fuses on your Vision 1 system may occasionally need to be replaced. To replace the fuses, begin by turning off the system. When making any repairs or performing any maintenance such as replacing the fuses, remember to remove the power plug from the wall receptacle and unplug the cord from the system's main power receptacle. Ensure that the key switch is in the off position. Ensure that the main power switch is in the off position. Locate the fuse holder directly above the main power receptacle. Unlock and pull out the fuse holder by inserting a small insulated flathead screwdriver into the slot on the fuse holder cover. Replace the fuses as follows. If the wall voltage is 100 or 120 volts AC, two fuses rated 250 volt type T, 8 amps, slow blow, 5 mm by 20 mm. If the wall voltage is 230 volts AC, one fuse rated 250 volts, type T, 4 amps, slow blow, 5 mm by 20 mm. Insert the fuse holders and press until it locks into place. The external door interlock is a safety feature that disables the laser if the treatment room doors are opened or the interlock plug is removed. The interlock can be set up with a remote switch, or an external switch can be wired to the interlock plug. Plug wiring shall only be performed by a qualified electrical professional. Calibration is a service procedure to be done only by Luminous Certified Service Engineers or customers who have taken and passed a Luminous Service Certification Training course. Adjustment by anyone other than a trained Luminous Service Engineer or a certified customer voids the existing manufacturer's warranty on the instrument. Calibration must be performed by an engineer or technician qualified to work on energized electronic laser equipment. Calibration questions should be referred to your local Luminous representative. First, it's important to recognize the importance of protecting your eyes while operating or working around laser equipment. Laser safety eyewear is routinely required with most lasers. When using the laser system, the laser safety officer should determine the need for safety eyewear based on the maximum permissible exposure, MPE, normal hazard zone, NHC, 
the normal ocular hazard distance, NOHD, and the optical density, OD, for each of the available laser emissions and the configuration of the treatment room, usually within the controlled area. In addition to providing the required laser safety eyewear, take the following steps to make sure that the treatment room or controlled area is secure. First, place a warning sign on the outside of the treatment room door when the laser is in use. Next, close and secure the treatment room door during laser operation. Finally, external door interlocks that automatically disable the laser when the treatment room door is opened may be installed. Remember these safety tips. Always make sure the delivery device is properly connected to the laser. Improper connection can result in a dangerous inadvertent secondary laser beam resulting in severe eye or tissue damage. Never substitute prescription eyewear for the appropriate laser safety eyewear. Prescription eyewear can concentrate the laser light to the eye. It might also be shattered by a high power density beam, possibly causing severe eye damage. Never look directly into any optical lens, optical fiber, probe, or laser system aperture while the laser is energized. Severe eye damage could occur. Make sure the laser is completely shut down before inspecting any delivery system or laser components. The laser has an emergency off push button which immediately turns off the laser. To prevent unauthorized use, the laser can only be turned on with the master key. The key can only be removed when the laser is turned off, and the laser only operates when the key is inserted into the key switch. When the key switch is turned to the on position, the laser power-up sequence is initiated. Operation and adjustment controls are located so that the user need not be exposed to laser radiation during the laser operation or adjustment. The laser has a protective housing that prevents unintended human access to laser radiation above class 1 limits. The housing must only be opened by a luminous certified technician. An external door interlock receptacle and plug are provided to disable the laser if the treatment room doors are opened. Refer to the laser safety eyewear section of your operator's manual for additional information. If the electronic system detects a fault condition, the laser exposure cannot occur. The laser power supply is turned off, the safety shutter is closed, and the foot switch is disabled. Some fault conditions may be cleared by the operator. Refer to the troubleshooting guide in your operator's manual for additional information. When the laser is powered on, the laser emission indicator displays on the control screen to provide visual warning that laser energy is accessible. The indicator continues to display until the laser is powered off. When the remote control is connected to the laser, the ready standby selector illuminates to provide an additional visual warning that laser energy is acceptable. During treatment, treat displays on the control screen and illuminates on the remote control. Careful study and application of the procedures in this presentation will ensure a long life of effective service for your luminous laser system and, more importantly, safe and effective operations for you.